Right, okay, the near boat is Edward Hooper on Amina. And this is the latest iteration of his split junk sail. And then the further away boat is Chris Boxer on MLN, which is a Coromandel, and he's got he's got he's got Edward's previous sail. And um, Chris's sail is the one that was featured in uh, Practical Boat Owners when they did a, an example. And they sailed two splinters next to each other. Hello! Marvellous. Love to meet you. <laughs> I've, I've been telling her about giblets, but she hasn't seen any yet. There we go. Nice, he's laughing up. Thank you. Well, well, I've been doing that with Chris. It's interesting. Now, Chris is not like totally used to his boat, and he's not um, he's not been sailing with that sail very long, so it's not a really fair comparison. And so far, there hasn't been a huge difference. But he definitely, in light winds, he just gradually creeps away from me. So he's definitely making better, and he's not trying. Because like, yesterday, we were sailing across um, from. Let's just point at Chris while I'm talking. Well, yesterday. We were sailing across from the island and basically Chris was sitting there reading a book and he said he looked up his sail occasionally and thought, should I change that? Should I fiddle it? And he's like, nah. And I was sitting here, I was following him and I was quite, being quite careful and trimming my sail and fiddling around with it and trying to get it right. And I couldn't keep up with him. So it just goes to show that that is, it, it took like several hours before he'd gone a mile or further. So he's only doing maybe a third of a knot faster. But he's definitely going a bit quicker. It, it's, I think it's great. I've had a quick go on Chris's boat and it's very noticeable the weather helm change because with, the, with this sail you get a lot of weather helm. <laughs> it was the same on Chris, on there. Exactly, on, on, Cor on the Coromandel we just set the sail and just went in the right direction. Very impressive. Yeah, if you, yeah that's strong winds, yeah certainly, yeah. It's straight out of the book. This is the original sail from 1983. This is as it came from uh, as it came from Newbridge. As God intended. <laughs> you can see the shadows on the on the camber there. That shows it nicely. Well, this is one way to have a junk meeting. I go round, Edward. No, no. I go round. Come along. Okay. I'll pass you this one. Yeah. There we go. Thank you. 
perfect one, thank you. Hired until you get some of these motorbikes coming with their big washes. Yeah. And then it, it does put a bit of a belter on the. Yep. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I mean, half the half the pull of the boat is going through here, and that's the real difference. In uh, in more wind, right now my my tiller is central, but with a bit more wind, it'd have to be over. Uh, here we are at um, Hurst Point, it's Hurst Castle. Here's the Isle of Wight on the starboard side. We're just coming in through um, and just ahead there is MLN. MLN is Chris Boxer's Coromandel and he has on it a second-hand sail from Edward Hooper who builds these um, split chunk rigs. and. Uh, He's just got brave enough, uh, because Chris had to repair his own mast, he's only just been brave enough in these light wind conditions to raise up the whole sail. And consequently, he's got significantly more sail area than me and he's uh, pulling away quite well. It's very light winds. We've got like a force three, maybe four gusts. Um, and I've got my blue stuncil here. It's just my towel. Uh, 
but uh, it's been very interesting sailing in tandem with MLN for the weekend. It's clear that uh, she goes quicker um, and possibly points higher, although it's not completely obvious. Um, she definitely goes a little quicker pointing high, um, so there's definitely a bit of an advantage for the Coromandel. Now Chris is a relative novice with his Coromandel and with that sail, so uh, you know he, does, he, he probably could trim it a little better. But uh, there's not a lot of trimming can be done. I mean, it just uh, it just works. So, um, but he's definitely quicker. But on the other hand, he does have significantly more sail area, even with one panel in. Uh, so it's been a fascinating time, and we've had a good fun sailing around. It's all been light winds, though. We've had no real blows, and uh, so little chance to compare uh, what it's like in a bit of a stronger wind, um, which would be very interesting. Uh, so I think the main thing I take away from this is what I suspected, and that is that Taminoi has a little bit too has a little bit too little sail area. She doesn't really go in light winds. She doesn't really want to go very fast. You, she really has to be in a five or up to really move uh, to get up to her cruising speed of like four and a half, four four and a half knots, uh, or three and a half up wind. She just won't do it until there's a five. Um, at least. Mind you, I've been out in a six uh, gusting seven with full sail up and uh, that's been fine. She does very well at that. So I think this just shows that my sail is too small. So that's my thinking at the moment about uh, a sail plan, but I kind of want to go there in stages and experiment, probably by making a sail out of tarpaulin and some battens and uh, just playing with various factors and seeing what I can, seeing how it behaves. As you can see, as I've been talking, MLN has been pulling away. And that's definitely the, the sail area in affecting her speed. We look to the waterlines, and I am carrying a lot of stuff on Tammy Noy. She's very much a, a well equipped little ship. Um, but uh, our waterlines aren't that much different, so I suspect their weight isn't hugely affecting things. Mm -hmm. 